So to understand the higher dimension objects, we also do slicing. Now we're just slicing a four-dimensional object, and we're going to get three-dimensional objects as a slice. That is a pretty cool idea. So, for example, a hypercube, right? A hypercube, uh, I also have it in my notes here, uh, is full of, it's a hypersphere, sorry. A hypersphere is full of spheres. So my favorite way to explain it is, if you slice, here it is. If you slice at any place a hypersphere, a slice is also going to be a sphere, but not a hyper anymore. If this is a watermelon, when you slice a watermelon, it decreases dimension every time. A slice of the watermelon usually is not a sphere anymore. If you slice a hyper watermelon, each slice is also a watermelon. So you take a knife, you slice a watermelon, and the smaller watermelon pops out of it. That's how cool it is. So that's exactly what you see on the picture. Lots of smaller spheres rotating and they're moving and have different radii and sizes inside of the hypersphere. We can only see the slices. So I have a slice at any moment and that's a, and that's a watermelon and you're like, whoa. So that means the high dimension object is full of three dimensional objects, which are watermelons. So I have this to show you. Let's see if it's gonna work. Yeah. Something like that. So higher dimensions are awesome. And uh, it's just pretty cool that math helps us to understand higher dimensions. Uh, this is a five dimensional sphere. And slices now are four dimensional spheres, okay? So if it's a five dimensional orange, in this case it's orange, then slices will be four dimensional oranges. Can you imagine that? How cool is that? and vice versa. So this is an equation of this hypersphere. You don't have to know it. R, uh, so x squared plus y squared plus z squared, we know that. Now plus w squared gives you the output radius squared. So it's a four-dimensional watermelon, for example. And every time you slice, it gives you a three-dimensional watermelon. And to know that, see, so we have those um, higher dimensions, we don't know how to visualize them or code them. But with what we could do, we could find the level curves, just like we did before. When we find the level curves, we find those different shapes. So that's how we can visualize uh, a four dimensional objects or even higher dimensional objects. Let me show you more stuff. Why bother? Why do we bother to go to higher dimensions? Because higher dimensions is not necessarily an object. That's one of the cool animations I found. It may be a temperature of your body. That's already a higher dimension. It may be viscosity of the liquids inside of your body, or maybe you're building something. A fluids of the engine. Those are all higher dimensions, and they all interact with three-dimensional machine. So you need to learn as an engineering physics major those things as well. What if people are talking uh, too much? Uh, if you have questions, ask me. Otherwise, do not. <laughs> Finally, check this out. Uh, in 10.6, we skipped uh, the list of basic shapes uh, because this class goes too fast. But actually, I was required to memorize all those basic shapes. So it was 10.6 chapter. Let me show you from the beginning. Here it is. Some important surfaces. For example, a sphere. Okay, we have to know the sphere. That's classic. X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared equals radius squared. But there is also ellipsoid. Uh, because the radius will not be the same, it is stretches or shrinks ups and downs. Now you divide by different radii, and each radii will shrink or stretch height, width, and so on. That's ellipsoid. Ellipsoid is a 3D ellipse. So paraboloid looks like that. Paraboloid is z, not squared anymore, equals x squared plus y squared. Uh, that is the idea. So again, I was required to memorize all of this at some point. Um, of course, these famous shapes here, paraboloid, x equals x, z equals x squared, z equals x squared minus y squared. We can actually work on this later. Those I took from Wikip uh, Wikimedia. These are the shapes. I think they can be moved. Anyway, hyperbolic paraboloid is a chips uh, chip. We're going to be talking about this chip a lot. Hmm? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, I remember. So 
the hyperbolic paraboloid with hyperbol hyperbolus and para parabolus at the same time. We will be talking about it because it's a saddle, and saddle has very important features of a saddle point and everything. But the cool part is when you slice here, you have parabolas, but when you slice here, is you have hyperbolas. So that is the idea. So it's actually a very perfect shape. It's used in lots of, not just food industry. It is actually used from a mathematical point of view, not to break and fit nicely in the box. But it's also used in engineering a lot. See, it's used to build things quite a lot. It's a good shape. Uh, so, Warsaw Railway Station, surface illustrating a hyperbolic uh, paraboloid is here. Look at those in Mexico, pretty cool. So it's very popular shape for construction. So civil engineers should know that. And they, because the properties of how it's shaped and the tensions between walls uh, makes it steady. And it has a settle point, which is very important mathematically and from physics point of view. So we'll be talking about that a lot. A cone, are you, did you jump again? Sure, of course. A cone, we already had a cone in this class today. Literally looks like ice cream cone. Also have lots of cool shapes because it can be shrinked or stretched like so. Uh, think circles that are getting bigger in both directions. That's a cone, pretty cool idea of that. Hyperboloid of one sheet. Uh, looks like that. It's a dress, but it's an infinite dress. So that's pretty cool that sometimes it can grow forever up and down. These guys, you'll have it in your homework. Hyperboloid of two sheets. They are um, separated. So there is no z equals zero uh, possible here. Also part of dresses. A cylinder will have infinite cylinders, will have cylindrical coordinates, and so on. That will be pretty fun. Finally, uh, we can talk about the level curves of those surfaces. And that's what I was talking about. The curves of those surfaces, either in 3D or 4D. Uh, you actually just need to see what do those surfaces look like when you slice them. And that gives you some major understanding of the situation. If I show you something more, any idea, questions, ideas, critics, suggestions? Then I'll show you this. How about this idea? 